Welcome, welcome to part two of uh, why we losing the war on innovation. I don't know if you saw part one, I'll put the link uh, below for part one, but basically um, I'm doing a three part series, as I said before, on, on, on why innovation run by African innovators are not taking off the way they are, you know, for a whole continent. 50 plus countries, there should be much more the number of innovators that are medium size or, or big corporation uh, already by now. But one of the biggest issue, and I've talked about it before, one of the biggest issue is partnership. Uh, number one, but also we don't use our own innovation. Big corporation here in Africa, don't buy local innovation. Don't incorporate local innovation into their value chain. Government, government is the biggest purchaser of products and services in any country, right? Well, governments in Africa, in general, don't buy local innovation, whether it's the software, whether it's hardware, whatever the case that is, solution on the ground, and that's a huge, huge problem. You know, I, I, I always ask myself, you know, China 30, 40 years ago, we're not what China is today. A lot of countries had to learn certain technology, had to, to, to put infrastructure together to learn those technology. But at the same time, they consume their own technology. You're not gonna see a Chinese government or or any uh, uh, government in developing countries trying to buy, you know, technology from outside uh, on a bigger scale. It might be some components left and right, yes, but not on a bigger scale, not a whole product, for example, on the software side. Or, you know, if you, if, if you have, a, if you want to develop your agricultural, you put, you put infrastructure together to at least have an assembly line. But, and I'm generalizing, of course, I mean, every country in Africa have, are on a different level of that problem, right? Some countries are improving that ecosystem much better than others, but overall, we're still behind mindset, right? We buy, I, I, I remember I was talking to some uh, telecom companies. Uh, there was a company in Nigeria that makes towers. And he was telling me, you know, he was the only company in West Africa making towels. But for him to win a contract with the telecom company was a hustle. You know, he was competing with foreign companies. And instead of, of you know, a no-brainer for companies to buy locally, uh, or at least regionally, his product, they would prefer going to China because they didn't trust his product, they didn't trust... The hardware was reliable because he was Nigerian. And that's crazy to me. That is crazy. And that's what I'm saying. We, we go into war with a knife where the competitors has a gun and we can't win like that. We, we just can't win. I used to say it was a battleground. You know, this battleground of innovation um, on the continent. But it, it's a war. It's literally a war that we're losing. We're literally losing overall. We think we're winning some ground, but we're losing. Yes, there's huge innovation opportunity in Africa, but we are not the one taking advantage of it because we're not consuming locally. We're not consuming our own technology. So how can we solve that? Because it's one thing talking about a problem. It's another thing proposing solutions. Well, the solution already exists. They already spread out, you know, uh, developing countries are using it. They have laws, they have policy where you cannot go outside until you look within the country, the region, you know, your neighbors or, 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 or you know, they put policy together. In the States, for example, there is certain aspect where you cannot go outside for finding the solution. Government cannot contract a Chinese company or Russian company or any other company. They have to look locally. And if it's not, if it's nothing locally, what they do? Well, they put up a grant for private companies to partner with a private company to grant in a bid where you can bid for grant to do research on that area where they're lacking on. It's, it's not, it's a no-brainer. 
So let's say we, 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 we need a, a drone technology for our agricultural sector. We have no drone uh, uh, companies developed already. Well, we should put a grant together, uh, put a bid, a local company, and that local company can even partner with a, 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 a foreign company, but the local company is the lead, right? And what does he do? What, 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 what's so beneficial to do so? Well, number one, you truly develop <coughs> the local economy because now the money circulates within the ecosystem, right? Now that business has a client. The money stays mostly in the country, and that money you pay tax on. And you create jobs. It's not just a job creation now. You know, the money circulate within the ecosystem. And that's what the, the key is missing. They say that the amount of money that, that gets out of the continent of Africa is around 20 to 25% of the whole GDP. That's crazy. That is crazy, you know. So we're not holding any money. We're bringing a lot of money, but for every dollar that we get, two dollars come out of, of the continent. For every dollar that we get, two dollars come out. And, and, and that don't, you know, and, and, and the, there's no, no one, well, a lot of people are talking about it, but no one really coming up with those type of solutions. So policy is the key. There should be policy across Africa where any government contracts or any government uh, um, acquiring, needing a solution for any industry or any sector has to come from the continent, period, right? That should be a law, a policy, and we need to put policies together that will minimize. And I've seen Nigeria, of course, Rwanda and other countries, for, for example, in the agricultural sector where they're banning now the import of rice. Um, I was watching a documentary about how in, in Congo, um, in Kinshasa, you know, 85% of all the food consumed in the city is imported. That is crazy. Yet, everything can be grown in that country. That country is so rich, the soil can grow pretty much anything. But the problem is what? The logistic. No roads. Poor logistics. So people cannot bring their food, their, their fish, or whatever goods they have to the city. So it's better to bring it from the ports than to bring it, you know, inland. And until we change those things, well, guess what? I'm probably going to have another vlog a few years from now talking about the same thing. So that's part two. Put some comment. Let me know what you think. And, uh, yeah, check out the video. Take care.